In our day-to-day -day life, we come across many optical illusions. One such optical illusion that has made people scratch their heads is the infinite chocolate paradox, which leaves you with an extra cube every time you rearrange it. Another similar paradox is the triangle paradox, where after rearranging, you get a missing cube. Well, to know the solution or create a similar one, stay with us. While in high school, he came across this problem which bamboozled us and curiosity arose within us to know its solution. So we started surfing about it and we were unable to find a convincing solution. So this video is a mere attempt to make you understand this. These problems are based on Curry's paradox according to which we assume something to prove the other thing. For example, if this sentence is true, then the sun revolves around the earth. In this sentence, we assume that the first part is true and then prove that the sun revolves around the earth. In this case, we know that it actually doesn't revolve around the earth, thus defying the assumption. Similarly, in the triangle paradox, we assume it as a triangle which is actually quadrilateral. Let us consider a triangle of height 5 units and base 13 units. This triangle is cut into such a way that it makes two more triangles, one with the base 8 units and height 3 units and another triangle with the base 5 units and height 2 units and a rectangular portion that is cut into two L-shaped polygons. Upon rearranging this, we can see a significant area apart from the triangle and there's no more a missing cube. Now let's see how this area is formed. These two triangles are the part of the larger triangle, which means the slope of the hypotenuse of all the three triangles should be same. But is it so? The slope of the smaller triangle is 2 by 5, which is equal to 0.4, while the slope of this triangle is 3 by 8 which is equal to 0 0.375 and slope of the large triangle is 5 by 13 which is equal to 0 0.3846 and will be going on. From this we can infer that there is a slight difference in the slope of all the three triangles. But why do we consider this? This is because the first condition of Curry's paradox is we assume something to prove the other thing. In this case, we have assumed that the smaller triangles are the part of the larger triangle, while they are actually not. The triangle we have assumed here is not a triangle actually, it's a quadrilateral, even after the energy. Now let us see the graphical representation. We will start with the line y equal to 5 by 13x, which is the hypotenuse of the larger triangle, at x equal to 5 that is at x equal to 5 on substitution we should get y equal to 2 but what we get is 25 by 13 that is 1.92307692 similarly on the other hand at y equal to 2 we should get x equal to 5 but what we get is x equal to 5.2 so is this strip the reason behind the missing cube? No, it isn't. We haven't considered the other triangle according to which at x equal to 8 which is the base of the other triangle we should get y equal to 3. But what we get upon substitution is 8 into 5 by 13 which is equal to 3.07692 I know it's a large number. On the other hand, at y equal to 3, we'll get x equal to 7.8. So while we add both the areas, we may get the missing area. 
Let's see upon integration. So we'll first do integration based on the limits x equal to 5 to x equal to 5.2 and the limits are uh, 5 by 30 x dx plus from x equal to 7.8 to x equal to 8 5 by 30 x dx upon integration we will get the area equal to the area of this one will get equal to 0 0.392 3076 923 I know it's a large number but it's necessary and other area that is equal to 0 0.607 692 307 Okay, you can do one thing, you can add this number, well I don't have space so I will just directly write the addition of both this. The addition of both the numbers is exactly equal to 1. Well, that is equal to the area of the missing cube. Isn't that amazing? There's another method to find the solution. There are two cases. In the first case, we will consider the 3 by 8 triangle at the bottom. And in the second case, we will consider the 2 by 5 triangle at the bottom. In the first, in both the cases, it forms quadrilateral. But in the first case, it will form a quadrilateral that is inward, and there won't be any missing cube. In the first case, it will form a quadrilateral with sides 3 by 8 x and 2 by 5 x plus a constant term. That is because the line doesn't start from origin. So you can find this term by inputting x equal to 8 and y equal to 3. Now we are going to integrate this area. But wait, we'll, we are going to even add this excess of area that is formed on rearranging. So here we will get a missing cube and some excess of, excess of area above the hypotenuse. In this the quadrilateral is formed with the sides y equal to 2 by 5x and y equal to 3 by 8x plus a constant term. As mentioned before the line doesn't start from origin. So the limits will be from y equal to uh, no from x equal to 0 to 8 that is uh, 5 by 13 x minus 3 by 8 x dx plus limit from 8 to 13 5 by 13 x minus 2 by 5 x plus 0 0.2 dx And the term from that, that will be limits 0 to 5 and here we will start with 2 by 5 x minus 5 by 13 x dx plus limits will be from 5 to 13, 5 to 13. 3 by 8x plus 0 0.125 minus 5 by 13x dx. I did a mistake here, that is, you'll find that you'll get it minus 0.2, not plus 0.2, okay? So you'll get it here minus 0.2. On integrating the whole sum, in the first case you'll get 0.5 and on the other other like in the other triangle part we will get 0.5 so then it will it will give us sum of 0.5 plus 0.5 that is exactly equal to 1 that is equal to the missing cube did you notice that the sides used here are the numbers of Fibonacci series well the solution is based on Cassini's formula according to which in a series of 3 Fibonacci numbers F1 F2 and F3 the product of the first and third Fibonacci number difference the square of the second number is equal to is always equal to 1 or minus 1. Okay, well n is the nth Fibonacci number from which we are starting. In our case we have considered the sides 
5, 30 and 8. So according to Cassini's formula, 30 into 5 minus 8 square equal to minus 1 power 4 where 5 is the 4th Fibonacci number. So we'll get it is exactly equal to 1 which is equal to the missing cube. Let us visualize this. We will take both the triangles, one with the missing cube and one without it. Earlier we noticed that they are quadrilaterals, one with excess area of 0.5 units and the other that lacks an area of 0.5 units. These two fit into each other to form a rectangle of side 5 and 13 units with a missing cube. These parts fit exactly into an 8 into 8 square, thus obeying Cassini's formula. You can create your own paradox with one or more missing cube by using the general equation x2 x0 minus x1 square equal to mu where mu is the missing area and x2 is equal to x0 plus x1. For example, if you want mu missing area, let us assume a square of sides x1 and cut its part in such a way that it exactly fits into the rectangle of side x2 and x0 leaving mu missing area. To find the value of x0 we can solve the general equation x2 x0 which is the area of the rectangle minus x1 square which is the area of the square equal to mu which is the missing area and we can substitute x2 value. Similarly, in the infinite chocolate paradox, the bar is cut in such a way that the side to be replaced is smaller than the existing side thus making the rectangular chocolate bar smaller. The missing area is compensated by the extra cube. That's it for today guys. If you like our video, click the like button and subscribe our channel. Meet you up with another interesting video. Till then, it's a bye from Psygeeks. Bye.